what igno is doing in specific now it is covering the essential commodities act and with us we have dr k m nath he is joint director in food safety and standards authority he did his msc food technology from cftri and then he worked for 4 years in food processing industries from 1980 onwards he has worked in different capacities and now he is with the food safety and standards authority i will request him to give detail about the essential commodity acts and the other issues related with this act sir please friends there are many essential commodities which are uh, used in our day to day life uh, starting from foods clothes housing etc Uh, various uh, food products uh, food grains mm, pulses and other food stuffs and feeders uh, housing related like uh, uh, cement um, steel and uh, clothing uh, like jute uh, uh, cotton and many other commodities uh, like uh, fuel petroleum products uh, 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 kerosene uh, diesel Uh, then uh, petrol and uh, other uh, essential commodities like uh, uh, drugs and other pharmaceutical products which are uh, essential to our day to day life but due to uh, some unscrupulous and greedy uh, nature of human being um, uh, there could be uh, sh- artificial shortage of these commodities uh, due to a hoarding and black marketing of these people to overcome this government of india uh, <coughs> enacted an act in 1955 called essential commodity act uh, f- for uh, uh, making these uh, commodities easily available to the common people with a fair price and quality and to facilitate su- smooth supply of essential commodities in this act government has got a uh, power to control production distribution sale trade and marketing and commerce of these essential commodities after learning these uh, modules which is one of the modules in your uh, course food safety uh, and quality management uh, you will able to learn uh, the various aspects of laws related to food because many of the orders Uh, are covered uh, on uh, related to food in essential commodity act which i i'll i shall discuss later on and after uh, completion of this course as a student of food safety and quality management uh, you will be able to utilize your knowledge um, in your profession as a quality control manager in quality control laboratory or in the food processing factory as a as a quality control supervisor or manager there are uh, various sections uh, in the uh, essential commodity act which are the operative parts which uh, give uh, power to the government uh, to deal with uh, the various uh, order and uh, proper implementation and enforcement of uh, the act and uh, order laid down in the act the the section 1 uh, it is uh, this title short title called Uh, the uh, act is called essential commodities act and it is extended all of india section 2 uh, defines various terminology for example sugar is uh, defined as uh, 
commodity containing at least 90 percent of sucrose. Section 3 uh, stipulate uh, power to uh, uh, the central government to control production, supply, distribution, uh, sale, uh, trade and commerce. This is a very important uh, section in which uh, many of the orders uh, related to foods are uh, promulgated from time to time. Section 4 and 5 uh, gives the uh, power, the imposition of duties to state government or central government and section 5 uh, delegates uh, give the power to delegation of powers uh, to the appropriate authority uh, designated by state government or central government. Section 6 uh, stipulates uh, the powers to uh, the appropriate authority to confiscate uh, the essential commodity. That means uh, it gives the power to uh, so detain or seize the commodity if uh, there is a contravention of any provisions of the order uh, to the uh, authority. And he can uh, then dispose the commodity as he deems fit. But before confiscation, uh, a SOCOS notice is to be issued to the uh, offenders, which is uh, provides under the section 6B of the act, uh, with giving some uh, <coughs> time like uh, one month to reply. And if his answer, uh, reply is not so sat satisfactory, then uh, the authority can take appropriate action. If the action taken by the authority uh, is uh, not uh, satisfactory to the offenders or he can uh, want to appeal, then he can appeal to the appellate authority uh, the under uh, section uh, uh, 6C of the uh, act. Then section 7 uh, pre pre stipulates the mode of penalties for any offences, which, which varies from uh, 3 months to 7 years depending upon the uh, type of uh, offences and including a penalty wh which is uh, given by the uh, awarded by the appropriate court. Section 8 stipulates that attempts and abatement that means if a person attempts to uh, contravene any provisions of the act or he abates uh, an offences abased an, another offender, he is liable to be punished under, under the act. Section 9 states that any false statement is given uh, in response to any uh, provision of the act or any order, uh, that then uh, the, uh, the, this uh, person is liable to be punished under the, the act for giving such false statement. Section 10 stipulates that the offences is done by any companies. Companies mean a, a body of corporates en engaged in business operation. Then the person responsible like a directors, secretary or manager or any other person authorized by the company is liable to be punished under the act for any offence committed by a company. Section 11 stipulate uh, con cognizance of offences. That means uh, no court can take con cognizance of any offence unless uh, uh, the fact is uh, given in writing by a appropriate authority uh, that is a government servant as <coughs> stipulated uh, by uh, um, section 21 of Indian, Indian Penal Code. Section 12 uh, give powers to the state government to constitute special courts for the uh, trial of the offences or prosecution launched uh, by the authority for contravention of any order or provisions of the act. Section 12 stipulates that burden of proof in certain cases. If a person is found to be in possession of any unauthorized uh, commodity or he is doing any business of unauthorized production or sale of any commodity or any, any offences and the burden e lies on the uh, offender to prove that the, uh, the product or commodity he possesses, he, he is having the uh, li uh, appropriate permit or license uh, uh, 
by him it is burden is on him only to prove that it is not unauthorized then section 15 stipulate that protection of action taken under the act that means if an authority takes any action for the contravention of any provision uh, of the act or any offenses uh, uh, in performing his uh, duty uh, then no action can be taken or no uh, prosecution case can be launched uh, to this government or the uh, authority for the action taken in good faith section 16 uh, stipulate the repeals and saving clause that means if an order of the act is repealed for the introduction of any other act then the order is continue to be in force unless an another order is supersedes the previous order under the new act for example some of the orders uh, under essential commodities act uh, are going to be repealed uh, due to introduction uh, or enactment of uh, food safety and standard acts 19 uh, 2006 but these orders like food product order or meat product order will continue to be in force unless these orders are repealed uh, uh, and superseded by a new uh, order under uh, the food safety and standard act so these are the um, uh, some of the clauses uh, or section which, which are the operative parts uh, as how to uh, uh, implement and enforce the various uh, uh, provisions of the act or orders now coming to uh, various control orders under the essential act as i mentioned earlier that there is many commodities uh, cover under essential act uh, starting from food product to non food products which are essential in our day to day life but i will <coughs> concentrate my discussion on uh, <coughs> food product or uh, food stuffs uh, some of the uh, order related to uh, control order related to uh, food products um, which are enacted or uh, promulgated under essential commodities act are food product order 1955 meat food products order 1973 milk and milk products order 1992 edible oil packing regulation order 1998 vegetable oil products regulation order 1998 solvent extractant extracted oil dol mill and edible flour control order 1963 67 sugar control order 66 levy sugar control order under 79 sugar packing and mar- marking order 1970 food grains uh, prohibition of use and manufacture of starch order 1966 i will discuss some of the orders or one or two orders in detail because basic requirement of almost all of the orders for manufacturing of uh, products are almost same basic requirement is hygienic requirements and i will touch upon some other orders in brief so that you can uh, understand what are the basic hygienic requirements for manufacturing uh, of uh, any product under the essential commodity act number 1 is the food product order 1955 this order was promulgated under essential commodity act uh, under section 3 of uh, the act for the, this order is related to foods and vegetable products this cover this order covers almost all fruits and veg- all fruits and vegetable products uh, manufactured by any methods like uh, methods of preservation like uh, canning freezing dehydration uh, smo- or uh, Uh, using chemical preservatives or by natural preservative like salt or sugar and some non food product like uh, synthetic syrup sorbet uh, synthetic vinegar and sweetened aerated water are also covered under this order this order uh, has been so far uh, implemented and enforced by uh, directorate of food uh, foods and vegetable preservation ministry of food processing industries now it has been transferred to food safety and standard authority of india to manufacture any uh, products covered under this order may uh, require a license under this order there are certain requirements basically hygienic requirements uh, to set up a factory and to obtain uh, 
uh, food product order or FPO license. For example, location of the factory. To, to set up a factory, one should uh, see uh, whether location uh, of the factory or surroundings are uh, clean or not. There should not be any fill the surroundings or any a factory which are represent to food product that is hazardous for example hazardous chemical factory should not be uh, adjacent to food processing uh, factory minimum area for production and storage depending upon uh, daily install capacity and annual uh, production the factories are categorized as home scale cottage scale small scale uh, and large scale. For each category, there are certain area uh, specified for production and storage. Sanitary and hygienic conditions of the premises. For, for, for construction of food processing factory, uh, one should see that construction uh, is made such a way that it permits hygienic protection. Floor, wall and ceiling uh, should be constructed or laid down such a way that it should permit easy cleaning. Or all doors and windows should be properly fry proof, rod and proof, and uh, some uh, arrangement for um, proper lighting and ventilation, drainage, waste disposal fac facilities to be provided in the factory premises. Then factory uh, personal hygiene. The personnel or workers uh, engaged in production uh, should be uh, medically examined. They should be uh, free from contagious uh, or infectious diseases. They should provide, uh, should, uh, they should wear neat and clean um, dress, apron, uh, head wears, and hand gloves. And it should be ensured that they are not having uh, the long nail or uh, uh, any other uh, this food also they should not be in bare foods or it they should clean their hands and foods be before uh, entering into the processing hall as far as possible they should be provided with a change room then water water is an important ingredient for uh, food processing factory particularly uh, fruits and vegetable processing factory because it constitute not only it is it required not only for um, washing and cleaning of fruits and vegetables, uh, it, it is one of the basic ingredients of most of the product. So, water should be uh, potable as per Bureau of Indian Standard and adequate water should be supplied uh, provided in the processing hall with over a tank and other. And water treatment as far as possible, water treatment plant also should be installed for particularly for uh, manufacturing of sweet and irritated water. Machinery and equipment. The machinery and equipment used for manufacturing of fruits and vegetable product uh, should be so designed that it uh, permits easy cleaning and hygienic production. Required machinery and equipment should be provided uh, for manufacturing of particular products. Machinery equipment should not occupy more than 50 percent of the area in the processing hall. Then quality control facility. There should be minimum quality control facility. Uh, provided in the factory for a uh, small and large scale factory uh, there should be a quality control laboratory of at least 20 square meter area with a qualified chemist then after factory is set up uh, as per APO requirements then license is granted then after license is granted the uh, one should start production and the products man some manufacturer should be as per quality standards laid down uh, in the order. There are uh, different standards for each of the products. Uh, I, I, I am not going to detail uh, in this. Uh, there are physical standards like color, structure and the product is, should be free from foreign matter. Chemical standards like total soluble solid acidity and other total juice, con juice content, juice or pulp content in the product. There are microbial limits of yeast, mold and bacterial count and limits for additives, preservative, heavy metals, etc. Then packaging uh, materials uh, also specified uh, in the food product order. The packaging material e should be as per food gauge standard uh, of BSI, uh, uh, packaging material of uh, glass, 
cat bottle or any uh, suitable flexible packaging material may be used uh, of food gate standards. Then coming to labeling requirements, after manufacturing of products, uh, the container of the product should be properly labeled with necessary and mandatory uh, declaration uh, for the benefit of the consumer. Uh, labeling requirements generally uh, uh, should confirm uh, as per uh, uh, prevention of food adulteration act 1954 and prevention of uh, food ad adulteration rules 1955 and also package commodity act and package co uh, weight and measure rules 1977. Then coming to meat products order uh, 1973, this order is also uh, uh, so far uh, implemented by ministry of food processing industries now it is under FSSI. For manufacturing of any food products value add added food products um, uh, using any method of preservation like canning, freezing, uh, dehydration, smoking or salting, a, a license under uh, meat product order is required. The basic requirement of licensing um, is that of food product order because all hygienic condition almost same. But in case of meat product, since it is a very peri highly perishable product, the care should be taken for handling of raw meat because uh, most of the uh, unit are not having uh, their own slaughterhouses. So, care should be taken for transportation of uh, raw meat uh, from the slaughterhouses or uh, from poultry to the processing hall maintaining cold chain. So, depending upon uh, the uh, handling of raw material or availability of slaughterhouse, the factors of uh, meat processing um, under meat product order has been categorized into A, B or C category. A category factory are those the factory which are having their own slaughterhouse uh, for manufacturing of any food products. B category factories are those which factories uh, do not have their own slaughterhouse, but procure meat from uh, other slaughterhouse which are authorized by municipal corporation or municipal committee. And C category factories are those factories uh, which do not have uh, own slaughterhouse or they do not have the municipal slaughterhouse nearby and use uh, the meat from um, poultry meat or pig meat. Uh, these are categorized as C category. Fish processing is also covered under this category. It, uh, during 19, uh, 2005, uh, the production of fish products is also covered under meat product order uh, by an amendment. Then uh, other hygienic requirements uh, are almost same as I already mentioned. Laboring requirements is also uh, more or less same except uh, two points uh, they should be clearly mentioned in the label in case of meat products that is number one category of the license uh, to be mentioned on the label whether it is A category and B category or C category. And second, if monosodium glutamate is added in the meat product as a flavoring uh, agent, then there should be a clear uh, and conspicuous declaration on the label that it contains monosodium glutamate and not fit for infants below 12 months. So, these are the special level, level, labeling requirements in the meat product. The, the depending upon the category of the factory, there is a difference uh, fee specified, uh, license specified um, in this order. Then coming to milk and milk products order 1992. For manufacturing of liquid milk and li uh, uh, packing of liquid milk, pasteurized milk and milk products, uh, one has to obtain license under this order. But manufacturing or handling of milk uh, up to 10,000 um, a liter per day and milk solid uh, up to 500 metric ton per annum, uh, this registration or license is not required. After above 10,000 uh, liter of liquid milk or 500 metric ton of milk solid, a registration under state government or central government depending upon the quantum of production is required. 
the products cover under uh, this order is all, all, all uh, liquid milk, pasteurized milk and milk product lot, dahi, uh, ghee, paneer, uh, butter, all value added products are covered under uh, this order. Registration requirement, since milk is a very highly uh, perishable commodity, uh, the uh, registration requirement with hygienic condition should be uh, strictly maintained from procurement uh, to processing uh, to distribution of milk or milk products maintaining a cold chain. As I already mentioned the uh, requirement of registration uh, the ten, uh, above 10,000 liter of milk per day or 500 metric ton of uh, milk solid per annum registration is required. There are two registering authority, one is state registering authority, the unit which are handling uh, less than 2 lakhs. Uh, more than 10,000 and less than 2 lakhs uh, liter of milk uh, per day and more than 500 uh, metric ton of solid milk and less than 10,000 of metric ton of solid milk per annum is registered under uh, state registering authority designated by a uh, particular state government. And the unit which are processing uh, more than 2 lakh, uh, lakhs liter of milk uh, per day and more than 10,000 metric tons of solid milk per annum is registered under central registering authority. So, these are the, and um, there are some amendments also this milk products order made uh, recently in which uh, this licensing uh, period uh, is uh, reduced from 90 days to 45 days. An inspection of cow shed and other uh, things also has been exempted for uh, licensing requirements. Then coming to vegetable oil products, there are three orders under vegetable oil products, oil and oil products. One is vegetable oil products uh, regulation order 1998. Uh, this is implemented by uh, um, Directorate of Vegetable, Banaspati Vegetable Oil and Fats. Uh, Ministry of uh, Consumer Affairs, food, food and Public Distribution, Government of India. Uh, eligibility of grant of registration is basic uh, requirement is that one unit should be equipped with processing facilities and unit should be equipped with laboratory with qualified chemist of having at least B.Sc with chemistry as one of the subjects. And other hygienic and requ sanitary requirements, as I mentioned, al almost same to other food product. The edible oil packing regulation order 1998. Uh, this order is uh, actually implemented by state governments for uh, packing of any ed edible oil of any kind um, of uh, plant origin. The, this. Uh, Registration under this order is required. Uh, the state edible oils commissioner is the registering authority. Eligibility for grant of registration is uh, same as mentioned earlier. Unit should be equipped with processing facilities and equipped with a laboratory with chemist having BSc uh, with chemistry on one of the subject. Then third is the solvent extracted oil, DOL mill and edible floor control order 1966. This order is also implemented and enforced by um, uh, Directorate Banaspati uh, Vegetable Oil and Fats, uh, Ministry of uh, Consumer Affairs, Public Distribution, Government of India. Uh, depending upon category of the facility available for solvent extraction pre-cleaning of oil seeds and refining of oil. Factories are categorized into A, B, C, D and D. The unit which is having facility for solvent extraction and also pre-cleaning of oil seeds is categorized L as uh, A category factory. And the unit which is having solvent extraction, pre-cleaning and also refining facility is categorized as B category. The unit which is having only solvent extraction facility is 
categorize as C category. But a unit is having solvent extraction and also engaged in business of refined oil is categorized as C category and the unit is having neither of the solvent extraction or refining facility still uh, is engaged in business of uh, um, refined oil or D oil mill edible flour mill uh, is uh, categorized as E category. The depending upon category there are uh, designated officer um, who, uh, which is uh, uh, called controller, controller uh, uh, appointed by the uh, director of Banaspati and vegetable oil uh, one has to apply uh, to the department for registration of their unit. So, these are the some of the orders uh, covered under essential commodity act. Uh, I may I have uh, discussed this order because all these orders are uh, um, now implemented by uh, uh, Food Safety and Standard Authority of India uh, because the, this uh, introduction of this uh, Food Safety and Standard Act 9, 2006, these orders are going to be repealed, but unless it is repealed. Uh, this uh, this will be continue in force unless a new order or new standards uh, under the Food Safety and Center Authority of India are specified. So it may take time, but till uh, uh, then these orders will be continue in force. So some of the common features of the orders uh, uh, is are that all the orders require license or registration to the uh, issued by the appropriate authority um, as designated by state government or central government. All the orders specified hygienic uh, and sanitary parameters for manufacturing of the products and all the orders specify uh, minimum quality standards laid down, laid down in the in individual orders. And all the orders also specify labeling requirements uh, which should be followed as per PFA Act uh, 1954 or PFA Rules 1955 and Packaging Commodities Act and Rules 1977. And all the orders uh, laid down a set of forms, uh, for example, form A for uh, uh, application for registration or licensing and then form B in which license is granted and form C in which a annual production a return is to submitted to the appropriate authority. Though this specifies uh, this uh, set of forms to be maintained and submitted. So, these are the um, some of the order under SNCC Commodity Act. I hope after completion of the course and um, uh, learning uh, these requirements of the uh, um, la registration or licensing particularly uh, min uh, the hygienic requirement and minimum quality standards quality standard laid down in this order will be uh, able to learn and utilize your knowledge uh, in your future career as a quality control manager in a food processing factory or quality control laboratory. For detail you can uh, refer various uh, order or, uh, or essential commodity act and also you can refer uh, the PFA uh, Act uh, in which uh, uh, most of the uh, orders are also uh, laid down because PFA is the uh, murder act uh, which is also going to be uh, repealed due to introduction of essential uh, this food safety and standard act 2006. Hope uh, you can learn and I wish all the best and success um, as a student of the course food safety and stand, stand, uh, stand food safety uh, and quality management thank you th th thank, thank you you. thank you sir for covering uh, very comprehensively maybe uh, so uh, we can uh, give uh, share some of the salient features with the uh, farmers with the students the essential commodity act like you mentioned it is for the uh, so that the consumers can get the essential commodities which are required for them and the quality and at the required price they should get the 
commodities probably this was the yes main idea the main idea was uh, introduction uh, so that the, there is no hoarding is there the yes, government sir. can control the uh, uh, hoarding of the things and all the essential items like you started with the food then housing then drugs so those are covered under the essential commodity act but then we only shared with them with the the uh, the the orders which are with the food related food. items there so then uh, there are different we also introduced different sections are there from section 1 to there are around 12 16 16 uh, sections are there and each sections define uh, very well <coughs> that what is the purpose is there then we we also discussed the like fruit product order sir in the fruit product order maybe like uh, you have worked in a different capacity as a quality if someone is working as a uh, food safety officer or then particularly if he has to inspect the uh, the any fruit and vegetable processing in licensing unit so what uh, in the hygienic aspects can you give some example that what exactly you check so that are the cleaning of the personnel how do we uh, check and uh, uh, what type of standards are uh, given like you have given like total solubles uh, uh, total soluble solids and all those things whether these standards are same as in pfa or bas or fruit product order contains their own standards can you please explain yeah uh, regarding hygienic uh, uh, conditions of the factory uh, when we inspect a factory we see whether approach of the factory is clean or not and it is open or uh, or common approach or surrounding is clean or not or any repungent rep factory is there uh, which is hazardous to food product and then inside the factory we see whether uh, doors and windows are properly fly proofed because uh, uh, fly uh, this fruits and vegetable they attract flies so it is uh, whether it is all doors and windows are properly fly proofed or not all the material are properly covered or not and then floor is properly laid down with cemented or tiles or walls is uh, properly cemented up to 5 feet height of uh, walls in the produ production all should be uh, tiled or all painted so that it it is imper impervious that means it can be washed properly because f the particle of food uh, adhered to the walls and then um, we see whether drainage is uh, properly clear or not uh, it is chalked so, so that uh, the accumulation of uh, this effluent water uh, the the uh, pave <coughs> the way for the growth of microbes and then we see what are the waste are disposed as a frequent interval of time there should be pit outside the processing hall where it should be uh disposed periodically one hour after one hour or two hours and then it should be uh, carried uh, by municipal truck or uh, the factory should have their own arrangement to dispose of their effluent some factories are also having their effluent treatment plant uh, these are the aspect we see and then we see whether workers are wearing aprons because uh, the, uh, the, this may contaminate with the hair and apron and head hairs and uh, wearing hand gloves and whether they uh, they are they, they, we check the medical record whether they are medically examined whether worker is having any contagious uh, contagious disease like skin disease so these are the safety measures we we checked in a factory the, these are all are mentioned in the food product food order. product all are mentioned and all we check this whether it is is there and even it, this uh, these are to be checked for the Uh, uh, cottage or small scale or uh, uh, in all category in all but certain category. thing uh, it is not uh, uh, compulsory for home scale and cottage scale for example laboratory laboratory is only for small scale and uh, large scale factory and chemist also specified it is bsc with uh, chemistry or even large scale factory uh, he should be btech in food technology but home scale and cottage scale we don't insist uh, uh, experienced person i uh, will do because it may not It's be practicable practical. and regarding standards you mentioned individual products the specific uh, standards are specific for example mango juice so minimum percentage of juice is specified it should be 45% of pulp 
and minimum total soluble solute should be 10. So, this is mentioned and this should not be product should not be so any sign of uh, bacterial growth on incubation uh, at, at 37 degrees centigrade for 3 days and they should be free of foreign matter. For example, uh, gem also uh, the minimum total soluble solute is prescribed as 68 percent and minimum percentage of food content is 45 percent. Similarly, all products these are mentioned for tomato ketchup the microbial standards are also specified yeast and uh, mold content. Con but the labeling requirements uh, is, is to be met by the uh, yeah, but we FP also specify le labeling requirement but overall it should be met uh, under PFA. For example, food product the labeling requirement basic requirement like name of the product should be mentioned in the label then FPO number monogram should be declared then ingredients should be declared a, a descending order of proportion. For example, uh, in case of um, gem, the uh, 68 percent TSS means around, around 65 percent sugar is added. So, sugar should be written in first, first number first and then pulp or juice. Pulp and juice. So, uh, then uh, code number or batch number should be given best before use, uh, 6 months or 1 year should be given minimum a uh, maximum retail price is to be declared then name and address of the factory should be declared properly if the product is for export then it should be written clearly that it is uh, produce of india or product of india and most important if the in case of preservatives and other artificial coloring matter the statement should be given separately not under indicated that it contains artificial color or synthetic color or class 2 preservatives clearly given. And the packaging? Uh, packaging the also already I mentioned it should be packaging material should be as per BIS standard uh, BIS specification of food grade. Food grade uh, should be there. Yes. So, this is about the uh, one of the. So, we have also explained one of the fruit product order which it is ap applicable to all the almost all similar all because manufacturing name. process is, is the same hygienic conditions except some cases I mentioned like meat product because meat meat is highly perishable and meat and fish mm. and it is procured for fish or meat procured for from outside in unlike fruits and vegetable okay it procured for mondi or from direct from orchard but it is not that highly perishable yes. and what is the period of license is for an annual basis or it is no license is uh, given initially for one year and then it is renewed after one one year uh, for a period of one year three year or ten years the block renewal is allowed in uh, case of fruit product yes. in case of meat product and milk product it is uh, three years it is uh, three years yes so in, uh, in the when the as in uh, for for 10 years block here do you go for the in between inspection inspection we go and the product also do you product, uh, uh, go for inspection to ensure uh, the maintenance of hygienic and sanitary uh, standard laid down on the order and also we draw random samples and send for analysis if so it is non conforming we send notice to the manufacturer so in, in the in the order it is a provision is made that you can draw the standards yes, from yes. the uh, samples, samples from the outside and you and can market also and the last is uh, what about the nutritional labeling uh, which is coming into enforce how does it is yeah yeah nutrition that is i uh, mentioned that labeling requirement should meet the requirements of uh, pfa you know, the pfa have already notified a draft notification there it was to be implemented from 19th of march i think uh, so far as my knowledge goes, it is not in, in force, uh, the time has been extended. So, we will uh, friends, we will conclude this. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> <laughs>